Well, it's time in this biological weapons video to look at one that's been used throughout history, so it's not a theoretical one, it actually has been used, and it's the plague, and in this video we'll include bubonic and pneumonic plague. So, if you don't know the difference between bubonic and pneumonic plague, bubonic plague was the one that led to what were called bubos, which were horrible, sort of swelling, pus-filled lumps on the person's body, agonisingly painful to touch, which would randomly burst. Um, so, you know, it was like horrible, nasty, big boils and that would kill you slowly. And then there was another type of plague called pneumonic plague, which was the one spread by coughing and sneezing, and that would kill you much faster. It would lead to coughing up blood. It was similar to pneumonia, the symptoms of it, sort of tuberculosis, pneumonia type things like that, but it's called pneumonic plague. So during the Great Death and everything in Europe, um, both the type or the Black Death, both of those um, plagues were persistent at once, so you might, you had the chance of catching one or the other. I think if you're unlucky you could have both at once, but you know, that would be almost certain to die. Um, but the point is with the plague that obviously there's two variants of it, so bear that in mind because some people will say you're speaking about the wrong thing because they don't realise there was actually two diseases that occurred during the plague. As far as I'm aware, during the Great Plague, which happened later on, which is the one where you had the um, plague doctors with the beaked masks on that aren't gas masks, which I've covered before. Uh, that was pneumonic plague only, as far as I'm aware, during the outbreak of the plague. But the Black Death or the Great Death, or the you know, the famous plague, uh, the, which was probably around the 1100s, 1300s, was it? I can't remember the dates off the top of my head. But that was the plague that it had both the pneumonic and the bubonic plague in it. However, throughout history, both these plagues have been uh, attempted to be weaponized. Throughout ancient history, it was thought if somebody had died of the plague, you could launch their body from a mangonel or a sort of catapult, trebuchet, whatever, over the enemy's walls or into their settlement uh, to try and poison them with the plague. Similarly, you could throw an infected body down a well or something like that to try and infect a water source. So, bear in mind, pneumonic plague spreads via coughing and sneezing, as far as my bubonic plague spreads through bodily fluids. But both of them are fairly contagious, obviously very contagious with pneumonic plague due to the sheer amount of people that died of it. Now, in more recent history, the pneumonic plague was used by Japan, and the bubonic plague was used by Japan as a bioweapon. So this was during World War II. Japan had a thing called Unit 731, which is very horrific. I won't go into all the details here, but it was basically where they used Chinese civilians, for the most part, to test biological weapons to see how effective they were at killing them, carried out live vivisections, things like that. And then once they collected data on the um, biological weapons, they would then try and use them as a weapon of war. Now, supposedly they did plan on using attacks of plague on America, but they never carried those out. Obviously, Pearl Harbor was the only bombing raid, as far as I'm aware, carried out by Japan that got close to America, and that was Hawaii. Um, but the idea was that they wanted, you know, weapon, biological weapons of mass destruction. Now, they did kill between half a million and a million Chinese civilians um, with this method, which what they actually did was got sort of pottery dishes and filled them with the fleas, which carried bubonic plague, as far as I'm aware, and then they would drop those onto sort of rice fields and things like that in Chinese villages. So, it has been used in modern history, both of the types of plagues. Um, obviously, pneumonic being airborne is the easier one to catch, rather than being bitten by fleas or spreading it via bodily fluids. So... If there was the plague in the modern day, what would happen? Well, as far as I'm aware, there are vaccines and sort of treatments available of antibiotics for the plague. Now, it's not as dangerous as it was, you know, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, where there was no known cure for the plague. Um, you know, if you were lucky, you'd survive it, but most people didn't if they caught it. As far as I'm aware, and I'm as far as I am aware, there is actually cures for it, or at least treatments for it today. So its bioweapon effectiveness goes down because of that, because it's now treatable, you know, I guess most antibiotics, like lots of illnesses are. However, the thing you need to bear in mind is it's still a very scary disease, uh, in terms of what, especially what bubonic plague would do with big sort of pussy boils that make it very uncomfortable, you know, as you slowly die from them. So even if it's treatable, it's very scary in that sense. So... I would probably expect that maybe terrorists or rogue state may try and still use weaponized plague, but weaponized plague has existed throughout history, that's something I want to point out, it's a very deadly disease up until modern medicine came about on its own anyway, both types of plague, then you couple it with somebody who's on purposely spreading it with ill intention, 
um, it obviously becomes even more deadly because it can become more targeted than it would have done on its own. So what defence do you need? Well, for protection from the uh, bubonic plague you'd obviously need some sort of suit on to stop you coming into contact with bodily fluids. So um, that would be basically like an NBC suit or coveralls, raincoat, stuff like that. Um, and for the pneumonic plague, obviously you'd need your respirator with a particulate filter in to stop you inhaling the airborne disease. It spreads like flu or whatever else, people coughing and sneezing and breathing, or breathing out the germs that you would then inhale to um, contain it, you know, contaminate it and catch it yourself. Um, obviously if people are sneezing or putting their bubo fluid <laughs> on um, various surfaces, then they would need disinfecting as well. But Again, not catching the plague would be similar to not catching any other disease nowadays, but I said, as thankfully, as far as I'm aware, there are treatments available, which is why it's no longer really researched as a bioweapon like it was 50 plus years ago. However, that being said, that doesn't mean that it won't ever be used at all. But again, like most biological illnesses, the best way of um, staying away, uh, you know, it's the best method to not catch it is stay away from people as best you can and practice very good hygiene, things like that. But as I said, as far as I'm aware at least, there are cures or treatments available for the plague, so it's not as likely to be used, but just be aware, obviously, that it can still exist and can still be used as a weapon.